morning. Will you rise as you're able this morning and join us in singing an old hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. pray with me. God, we just want to say we're so glad you're here and you are our friend. What a friend we really do have in you, Jesus, and we thank you for that. We thank you that you are always here. You're always in us and with us wherever we are, and we thank you, God, that we can come to this place and be reminded of that over and over and over again, and we can share in that spirit that just keeps accumulating as we praise you together. And so today we give you praise and glory for all that you have done for us and all that you are to us. And we ask that as we go through the rest of this service that we will sense your anointing 
we will sense your presence and that we will just be 100% present with you to let you in. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. 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 You may be seated. If you are new with us today, we are so delighted to see you. I'm Reverend Keith Mazingo. And we, if you, again, if you're first, if you, it's your first time, is there first time folks with us? If you'll raise your hand. Hello. We want to say hello. That's a little flowers for you. We are so delighted that you chose to worship with us. And if you don't have a church home, we hope that you will come back and be with us. Make this home and be here every week and be a part of this community. I'm going to find you will tell you something about MCCers, they will just love you to death. So, you know, just come on, and if you want to feel some love, you're in the right place today. We'll just love you right on and on and on. Yay. So thank you for being here. <laughs> we also want to welcome those of you who are joining us online. We know that there are a lot of online visitors that uh, are with us live, and if you are with us live, we say hello to you, check in with us. Uh, if you're not, haven't done so already, check in. Let people know where you are. I already did it before service. Let people know where you are on your social media site so that they can join us in worship. Invite them to look at us online. And go to our, like our, our page on Facebook and they can see the service online. And we are just delighted that whether you're here in person or whether you are here online, that you are here with us today. And We've seen a few people that have been away for a while that have come in, some for work, some for out of the country and living other places. We're so glad you're back, and we just want to welcome you back today. So in that spirit, would you pass the peace to one another and just welcome each other? One, two, three, four. Take your seat for a moment. The first reading is from Psalm 130, the message version. Help, God. The bottom has fallen out of my life. Sovereign, hear my cry for help. Listen hard. Open your ears. Listen to my cries for mercy. If you, God, kept records of wrongdoings, who would stand a chance? As it turns out, Forgiveness is your habit, and that's why you're worshipped. I pray to God my life of prayer and wait for what God will say and do. My life's on the line before God, my sovereign, waiting and waiting until morning, waiting and waiting until morning. Oh, children of God, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. No doubt, God will redeem us back, bind us back from the captivity of sin. Please rise as you're able. body or spirit for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the Amplified Version. A woman in the crowd has suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years 
and had endured much suffering at the hands of many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was not helped at all, but instead she had become worse. She had heard reports about Jesus, and she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his outer rope. For she thought, if I touch his clothing, I will get well. Immediately her flow of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body and knew without any doubt that she was healed of her suffering. Immediately, Jesus, recognizing in himself that power had gone out from him, turned around to the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in around you from all sides, and you ask, Who touched me? Still, he kept looking around to see the woman who had done it. And the woman, though she was afraid and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Then he said to her, Daughter, your personal trust and confidence in me has restored you to health. Go in peace and be permanently healed from your suffering. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. God. In our gospel reading today, we hear the story of a lady who's had an issue of blood for 12 years. This lady has a major issue in her life. Any of us have any issues today? <laughs> oh, I, I'm, seeing, I'm hearing a lot of amens on that one. We got some issues up in here today. Any of you had it for 12 years like her? <laughs> Some of them longer than that. <laughs> of course, I, I, I was thinking a while ago about having issues, and was it Weeza and, and Still Magnolias that said, I don't, I don't have issues. I've just been in a bad mood for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you just been in a bad mood, but then it becomes an issue for us, for the rest of us. It was a long-term issue. And she spent all of her money going from doctor to doctor, psychiatrist to psychiatrist, counselor to counselor, anybody that would listen, anybody that where hope was offered. Any of us had to spend a dime or two on, uh, or a dollar or two or a thousand or two or whatever on some counseling 
for some of our issues. And some of us have been helped. And some of us are still learning to manage. In fact, I have some issues in my life. I'll tell you about another day. <laughs> if you don't find them out on your own. <laughs> I spent a lot of money trying to get some help. And what I found out, unlike this lady who got permanent healing, I got permanent management skills. And sometimes that's just as important and is a form of healing. If you'll notice, though, that woman was not alone in the crowd. There were a lot of people. It was a crowd And according to the scripture, this woman is going to find Jesus because she has heard that other people have been healed by just touching him. Just touching him. Not even talking to him. Not asking for anything. Uh Uh-oh. Not just asking for help. But just taking the initiative. Hear me now taking the initiative to reach out and touch him when he passed by. But she wasn't alone in that crowd. There was a whole crowd there. In fact, it was hard for her to get to him once she found him and found out where he was. If you were with us at the march yesterday downtown or some other march, well, I'm going to tell you, we, had, we started out way in the back on another street. We couldn't get anywhere close for a while. And as we would see some people come out of the crowd, we would go into the crowd because we figured if they could come out, we could get in. And we only made it about halfway up and found some shade. We never did see the, the bleachers and all, that, all the stuff where they had it. We couldn't even see any of that. And we even finally got tired enough to sit down and hold our signs, right? But at least we were under a shade tree, thank the Lord. We're under a shade tree. And we're watching and listening and trying to understand all the speakers. And at some times, you know, we're really paying attention. At other times, we're having own conversations and talking with people that are walking by and giving out cards for church, you know, and trying to get people to know because we had on our anniversary shirts, you know, our pride shirts. And then all of a sudden they said, and the next speaker, please welcome to the stage, Cher. (laughs) And oh my God, it was like a beeline. We came up (laughs) off of our, onto our feet and half of us were zoomed over to the fence I'm just telling you, it was like, woo, <laughs> what? And, and, and at first I was like, I'm not going over there. You know it's not the real share. They've got some <laughs> female impersonator over there. I, I really, I thought that can't be. It's not. It's not real. You know, I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to calm myself. <laughs> and, and a couple other folks were standing there with me, a little hesitant too, although Alex had already, you know. <laughs> Gone. I couldn't see anything but a flame. (laughs) And all of a sudden on the speakers we heard the voice. And we were and and somebody turned around and looked and said, It's really her. That's her voice. That's really her. And of course we're zooming in trying to take pictures because we couldn't get but so close. And I thought to myself, this is the way it was that day for that woman going through that crowd, trying to get to Jesus. But see, I didn't have to touch Cher. (laughs) I didn't have to. I would like to have touched the hem of her garment. (laughs) Although with some of her garments, the hems might be a little uncomfortable for me to touch. But I was thinking... I don't have to touch her, but if she had exactly what I needed, I'm not sure you could have kept me from that stage. And that day, Jesus had what this woman needed for her issues 
to solve her long-term illness when nothing else would work. And she figured that even though she was a woman, and women were not supposed to be that close to men, and even though she was not probably anymore, even if she had been at one time wealthy, she had spent all she had, so she was poor. She was willing to take the risk, feeling unworthy, perhaps. Uh-oh. That hit a note with a few people. Spirit, just check me. Somebody feeling unworthy. And let me just tell you one thing. You are not unworthy. The day Jesus died on the cross, we all got worthy. That was what that meant. We became worthy. worth e, Worth something. Worth God's time. Worth God's attention. Worth God's healing. She figured that part out. If I can just get there. If I can just get up there to him. And touch him. Surely. Surely I won't leave. But did you notice? She had to fall into the crowd. I'm not sure she meant just to touch the hem of his garment or hear him. Here, she, she fell into the crowd. But there was a crowd. She wasn't the only one with issues. Have you ever seen a crowd that there weren't multiple issues? Well, when I asked you all ago, a whole lot of you said amen. <laughs> you got some issues. We all have some issues, personal issues. And I got to thinking, I love the way the scripture said that these people were pressed, these people with issues were pressed up against Jesus. They were pressed onto him. So much that he actually felt when she touched him, even though he was being pressed from every side with people that had issues. But something was different with hers, you see. Something was different because... She received, not only did she go to get, but then once she got there, she received what God had for her. And he felt it. Jesus felt it. But there were all these other people pressing up. Now, why didn't they get their needs met? Because you see, I got to, it's, I know I'm an English major and I'm, it's a play on words, but the, the people that were pressed in the crowd. And I got to thinking about those pressed people. And among them were the suppressed. Uh-oh. Think back to yesterday. Think back to almost anything that's happened in the last year and a half. <laughs> people that were suppressed, put down by authority or force. Like suppressing a riot. Mm. Suppression also means to keep from public knowledge, such, such as keeping a secret. You know, we find out stuff on the news, and I mean the real news, not fake news. <laughs> and sometimes the real news that people say are fake news but it's not fake news because we can do our own homework and find out and we know who we can trust and they can only report what they know but then there's been some stuff that's been kept a secret from the reporters too. And then we find out more. We find out there's been a lot of suppressed information. To stop or prohibit the publication or revelation of Mm. There's always that one that wants you to, you, when you find out something, now don't you tell that. Don't you tell it. And we know a lot of that information is being suppressed. We know a lot of what our government does, our government does, has been suppressed. To exclude from consciousness. Uh-oh, that's more on a personal level. If I don't think about it, it's not real. Mm. 
It'll just go away on its own. Some of us grew up like that, didn't we? If I don't, if I don't acknowledge this, it's not real. Guess what? It was real. <laughs> to keep from giving vent to, like suppressing anger. Hmm. Now I'm going to tell you something. I'll go back to Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything. There's a time to be angry. One gentleman told me before service at the 9 o'clock this morning, he said, I'm tired of being nice. Like, well, okay, but remember where you are. <laughs> he said, I'm just an old grouch. I said, well, you're still our old grouch, and we love you. <laughs> and then he smiled. I know it hurt. <laughs> I love him, though. He's faithful. To keep from giving bit to, to press down, to restrain from a usual course or action. To keep us from doing what we know to do. What we know is right to do. In our own, what's happening at the border is not our regular course of action. Some man at the train station stopped us yesterday and said, Don't you know that this didn't just start? Why are you so upset with Trump? No. This are his words, not mine. Why are you so, and I hadn't said anything about President Trump. I'm carrying my sign. Has nothing about President Trump on it. Now, if you want to ask me what my personal feelings are, I'll be happy to share those. <laughs> but he said, this didn't just start. This was happening under Obama. And I was like, the train doors were about to close, and I said, well, we're just going to have to disagree on that. <laughs> Now, some of the rules were similar, but there was no zero policy, zero tolerance policy in place. And even the ones that were in place, the policies that were in place, it was let's not deal with that. Let's deal with people who are criminals that might actually come into our country to do harm. Where have I heard that before? Ooh, I better get back to this. <laughs> <laughs> to inhibit the growth or development of, and we're doing that to children right now. We are doing it to children. To inhibit the genetic expression of, oh, Lord, I know I just hit a whole bunch of folks right there. <laughs> Because many of us grew up suppressing our genetic code, our DNA, and our spiritual DNA, not just our biological DNA, because God had called us to be who we are. And we suppressed it ourselves, and we allowed others to suppress us. Which, you see, it's not just the suppressed that were in that crowd. There were also some oppressed, People. Very similar. The words are pretty much interchangeable today. But look at the, the definition. To crush or burden by abuse or power of authority. And I heard somebody say what this morning. Very, this morning. I used to work with children. I've retired. From, I've worked with children all these years. And what we're doing to them right now is abuse. I loved the definition's example. The country has long been oppressed by ruthless dictators, oppressed minorities as an example. To oppress is to burden spiritually or mentally, weigh heavily upon such as a sense of failure. How many of us have been there how many of us are there today? Those were our signs, by the way. 
But not only were there the suppressed in the crowd, and not only were the oppressed in the crowd, but there were also some depressed. There's murmuring among the people. <laughs> people who are low in spirit, sad especially, affected by psychological depression. Now, I know some of you have spent a lot of money trying to get out of that. Some of you have worked really hard on yourselves and you know your processes. To get yourself out of it. You've learned like I have to manage some things that you can't get rid of. To be depressed can be to be vertically flattened. Having the central part lower than the margin. Lying flat or prostrate. Or dorsoventrally flattened. I learned a new word this week. <laughs> now I'm an English major. I love learning new words. Dorsoventrically flattened. I loved that definition. There are a lot of other definitions, by the way. We only used a few of them. Reverend Alex and I worked through some of the, some of the definitions to, for this sermon. Dorsoventrically flattened. That woman was willing to fall on her face. Fall on her face and be stepped on if necessary to just touch of hope. And the last one, suffering from economic depression, especially underprivileged, being below the standard. Interesting statistic came out earlier this week, I was reminded. We, we understand this a lot in Los Angeles, but in every other place, and there is no place in America that if you are working 40 hours a week and making only minimum wage, you can afford your own apartment. Now, I know there are some exceptions where you know somebody that's not trying to make, and, you know, I get that, but generally speaking, we know that, that it's happening. More and more tents are going up in Los Angeles, but it's not just happening in Los Angeles. Notice what I said. Economically depressed so that you can't do it on your own. That's why people are grouping up to live together so much these days. There were suppressed in that group, oppressed and depressed. So why did they not get healed? Because the one thing that that woman did differently. Number one, her mindset. I'm going. I'm determined. I'm going to make this happen. And I like this thought. I've tried everything else and it got me nowhere. What helped? This can't hurt. So even if you've tried everything else, and you haven't really reached out and touched Jesus about it today. Well, it can't hurt. <laughs> so her mindset was determination. And when she got there, she had to do her part and reach through all of these people, all of these people with all of their issues. Lots of issues. And I just named a few people with lots of issues. And she reached through them. And she could not touch his skin, but she touched his clothes. <clears throat> and in that moment, in that holy moment, the scripture says she was permanently healed. She was permanently made whole. I bet in that moment the hemorrhaging stopped. The flow of blood stopped. 
No more adult diapers. It stops. And Jesus knew something had happened. She wasn't the only one. And I want to I want to go a step further. I think this had a something to do with it too, even though it's not in, in this sequence. After Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples reprimanded him and said, Lord, everybody's touching you. My goodness, what are you talking about? We're all touching you. The crowd's pressing in. What, what do you mean? <laughs> and the lady... I've read every book. I've sung every song. Some things you just have no words for. Uh, it's beautiful. As the ushers are passing out the welcome tablets, we'd ask that you would sign in and uh, uh, sign in so we can read what you write there, so we can acknowledge you and uh, and serve you better. Uh, this is our time of announcements, and for those of you who are joining us online. We would invite you to uh, prepare the elements that uh, you will use to join us as we partake in communion uh, in full faith that Christ is going to meet you where you're at. Uh, wow, that was powerful. Powerful. Um, the last verse in the, uh, in the Old Testament says that the work of Jesus when he comes as Messiah is to turn the hearts of their fathers to the children and the children to their fathers. And those of you who were at the march yesterday for keeping families united and ending the separation of families, would you just stand so we can uh, recognize you? Thank you so much. That is the work of Christ, and no better way to end a month of pride celebrations than to stand up for families. 
uh, here uh, in our country and at our borders. Also, we want to say thank you to those of you who supported the garage sale yesterday for TransUnity and for to raise funds for the Christine Daniels uh, scholarships. I understand they raised about $300, which is about half of a scholarship. And thank you, TransUnity, for giving us the opportunity with you to touch the future uh, through our LGBTQ uh, college students and graduate students. It's wonderful. Um, as I mentioned, um, uh, we had a great month of Pride, and today is the first day of July. Um, uh, in uh, the last month, we had our new pastor come to be with us, and uh, plans are being made for uh, Reverend Keith's installation, his formal installation here as our pastor, to take place on August 25th and 26th. And so, uh, if you're in town, we would love for you to be here to celebrate that with him and to celebrate with us um, as a church family. And um, as the ushers come to prepare to receive our morning tithes and offerings, I just want to say thank you to those of you who have been able to support this family, not only with your finances, but with your time and your gifts, your talents and abilities to make this place a, a real loving, welcoming place where people can reach out and touch Jesus Christ. God bless you as you give today.
thank you so much for lifting us up. We thank you so much for blessing us that we might be able to bless others. God, we just ask that you would allow us to see that as power in you, the power of sharing. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 You know, those of us who were there yesterday at the demonstration heard a wonderful young woman from Black Lives Matter. Now, this was supposed to be a secular speech, but she raised Paul in Ephesians, talking about what we're really fighting. It's not flesh. It's not flesh and blood. Whenever there's this much hate, this much disruption, this much pain in our general environment, we're not fighting flesh. Just as when we come to this table, it's not about an earthly meal. It's about a bigger meal. It's about that spiritual power that's really, really what we need to fight in this world. Not elections, not any of those other things, not even marching. I mean, you know I love to march. You know I love to march. But there's something else that we come to God for to change this world. As we are God's ambassadors and soldiers. So will you join me in prayer? God, we're just simple people. Just simple people just trying to get along. And so many times we can just, we can just wrap ourselves in that little cocoon that's our own little world, our own set of issues, and we get closed off. We, be, we feel like we're just individual parts, that we don't connect to anything. And then, God, you bring us back here, back to this community, back to this table, back to this family of love, and we realize that we can come out of our cocoons that we can leave our issues and become those butterflies that you've created us to be. And that that happens when we reach out and touch. When we reach out and touch the hem of your garment, when we reach out and touch our sisters and brothers, when we reach out and touch anyone else who's trying to do a good thing in this world, we realize, oh my gosh, we're healed. We're really healed, permanently. God, we just thank you for that knowledge and for that faith and for that confidence. God, we lift up to you the little babies in detention. God, we lift up to you the parents who don't know where their children are. God, we lift up to you the, the agents and officials who are called upon to carry out some pretty rotten orders. We pray that you would be with them too, God. That you would help them do the right thing, even in the face of the wrong orders. God, we pray for all those people who worked so hard within and without the church, God. They worked so hard to bring peace and comfort to your people and to your world. That is your work, God. And we're just so grateful that we have so many partners to be part of your work. God, we thank you for our church family. We thank you for this home. We thank you for all the people that we worship with, that we praise you with, that we come to you with in our secret selves and in our public selves, God. 
Those of us who sit here together share something very special, very intimate. And we are grateful that you've brought us here to this place at this time, in this hour, with these people to bring the gospel and a new world. God, we thank you for this table, always open, always nourishing, always a place that we come to to look for miracles, to look for that moment of touch when we reach out and touch you and you touch back. God, as we come to this table, we ask that you would just bless each and every one of us Relieve any misgivings that we might have of coming forward. Relieve any misgivings we might have of reaching out. Relieve any misgivings we might have about hugging, about kissing, about truly being part of this family and this meal. Give us peace, God. And in that peace, let us bring your justice. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. There was a night, not like other nights. There was a night when Jesus was together with his folks and still knew he was alone. When Jesus was presented with a huge, wonderful meal and yet only really need to eat a little bit. Just a piece of bread, the bread that he raised and blessed and broke and shared, saying, this is my body. This is my body that is given for you. Do this thing and remember me. In the same way, when supper was over, he took a cup and he gave thanks and blessed it and he shared it with everybody and said, this is my blood. This is the hard work. This is squeezing the juice out. That I can do it for you and that I can do it, that you can do it for all others that come after me. This is my blood given for you. And whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, what do we show? You know the the old saying, we do show forth the Lord's death until he come again. No, we show Jesus inside of us being able to shine outside of us. Being that power over flesh in us. Our power to defeat evil. Our power to bring love, our power to bring healing. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God, through Jesus Christ, we know that you have sanctified this ritual for a reason. God, we know that when you bless these elements, this simple bread and this simple juice, that something truly special happens. It happens at this table. It happens in these elements. It happens in our hearts. Bring about that change, God. We need to feel that change, God. We need to know that the hemorrhaging has stopped and the healing has begun. At this moment, as we receive, let it be so. Let it be so. Amen.
At this MCC, just like all the MCCs all over the world, we serve and celebrate an open communion. That means it doesn't matter who you are sitting here, it doesn't matter who you are on the internet, this table is open for you. You don't have to be a member, you don't have to be a friend, you could have just walked in five minutes ago, you could have even missed the sermon, the table is still open. This is where you can meet God, and God can meet you. But you know what, if you want to stay in your seat, God will find you anyway. Trust me on that. Ushers, servers, please come forward. Follow their directions, by the way, or you'll never find your way around all of this.
everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of
God, we want to say thank you for this time we've had together. We thank you for your power and your presence, your spirit that always lifts us up. We pray, God, that now as we go out and face new issues this week, because we know there will be, God, we pray that you will help us to remember to take ourselves like this lady did in our, our message today to the one who can heal us of all of our issues, to the one who can take us through. Help us to be determined to touch you, God, no matter what. And we'll give you praise and glory, for it's in your name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Shake hands and be friendly. Thank you.